So here we have our bootstrap files. We've just opened it up from the zipped folder and just custom named the enclosing folder. And now we need to check out what we've got. Well, first of all, we've got the CSS. We've got the development version with comments. We've got a minified version. We've got docs, which are a local version of what we've just been looking at online. So if I were to open up this index, what I'll see is a local version of the documentation built for this particular version of Bootstrap. So I'll always have that with me with whatever version I download. We got the documentation. So that's a handy thing. The JavaScript documentation as well. And then we've got some example templates for different kinds of layouts. There's a container app layout, a fluid layout, and then a hero layout. Let me show you this hero layout right now. I like it a lot because it utilizes this top bar and then it's got this nice huge welcome area and um, this is something they've called the hero unit which is a nice way of naming it and then they've got an example of their grid beginning here. We're going to come back and utilize this in our next tutorial. Then they have a folder with all the JavaScript goodness they've created for us. They've got custom jQuery plugins that they've written and uh, made an essential part of um, this framework if you'd like to utilize them. You can employ any that you'd like or all of them. And then below that, if we keep on going down here, we'll see that there's this library. The library is for those of you who work with less. Now, it's obviously great to work with less. I'm not going to work with it today, so I'm just going to get rid of it from my development folder here just to um, make things a little bit simpler. Then the license, and this is a copy of Apache um, version 2.0 license. We need to leave it with these files. That's part of the license agreement. Um, part of giving Twitter Bootstrap credit for what they've done is to include the license file that they reference. And um, we don't need the make file. We can leave the readme if you'd like. and We'll create our own at some point, I'm sure. But let's just work with this for now. So we've got our essential elements. And yet, this is not really looking like a website yet. The thing that's looking a little bit more like a website is the stuff in the docs section, to be honest, because if we just drill down into that folder, what you'll see is your index file, and then other markup files. Let me zoom in a bit here. And then the assets, and inside of that we've got the CSS, your icons, your images, and then your JavaScript, which looks a little bit more like a development site. There'll be some changes we'll want to make to that, especially if we go toward something like the HTML5 boilerplate. We'll move a few of these things around. Um, but I would like to use this in initial layout as sort of where I'd like to head. So to make this happen, we need to take a few steps to rearrange these elements. And if you'll follow me through, I'll just get started here. You know, there's a number of ways we could proceed, but I'm going to basically do this by utilizing this assets folder to organize all the CSS in one place. And so I'm going to take the minified bootstrap CSS and the development version and just drag and drop those in the CSS folder inside the assets folder. Then I'm going to take these example files particularly the hero unit. That's the only one I'm going to work with today. Um, I'm going to move it inside my docs folder right next to index and JavaScript. And then for now I'm going to get rid of that folder because I don't need it for what I'll be building. The JavaScript, um, we can take these plugins and include them where they've got a little bit of Google code prettifying um, JavaScript that they used for their documents. We'll actually want to do that ourselves. Um, and so I'm going to leave the JavaScript that's available in this assets folder 
and I'm going to take and move over all the JavaScript plugins from this other folder. So we've got those down in here in our little development version of our own set of template files here. So once I've done that, everything's gone from this external JavaScript folder, so I'm going to just delete it. And now I can take and I can move the assets and the hero and the index and the JavaScript. I'm going to take all of those and move them out to the parent folder outside of Docs. And so now we've got an empty Docs folder and I can get rid of it. So now here we have a little site that's looking like something we can build things with, except we've got to get our links hooked up. Because having moved around our CSS and our JavaScript, we've um, broken the connections between these files. So let's start fixing that. I'm going to start with the index and open that in my editor. And I'll go ahead and open it in my browser as well. And we can see what's going to happen initially here is, yeah, that connection to the CSS is broken. So now if I look at the markup, I'll see that it's looking for the CSS out here in this external folder. Right, going out of folder. And I need to change it so that it looks just like the others because I've moved that CSS into assets in the CSS folder. So I'm simply going to copy assets CSS and paste it right there. It's really not that hard. And now notice that these other links are right. We've got a link to their own custom docs CSS that they use for laying out their documentation pages. And then we've got a link to the JS folder that's inside assets. And that is, in fact, where that is. And so that's going to work just fine. Our shortcut icons are pointing at the right place, assets, ICO. And so we're in good shape there. Now one thing that's worth noting, though, is that there are some plugins that are included down lower at the bottom of the index of our documentation here. We've got the links to the JavaScript that's utilized in this documentation page. What I'd like to do is start building a systematic way of approaching the JavaScript. And I'd like for now, just to go ahead and for simplicity's sake, move all the JavaScript up into the head of the document. Now before we're ready for production, if we're going to follow the practices of the HTML5 boilerplate, we'll want to move that back down to the bottom. But so that we can see all our linked files in one place while we're working, I'm going to move them up here right after styles. So I simply cut the JavaScript links from down below and I'm going to paste them here up above. Then I need to fix a couple of links. I've got to replace the two dots with my assets. We're drilling down into the assets folder instead of going out to the parents folder. So just do that in those three places and we're off and rolling. So let me go back now and refresh my page and it looks and works the way it should. Scroll Spy is even working as I scroll down the page. The Scroll Spy plugin is keeping track of where I'm at and letting me know that now I'm in the layout section of the page. So good, we're all hooked up. Now I just need to do that with my other files. We'll do it with the JavaScript file. I'll go ahead and quickly walk through that process because it goes actually pretty quickly. Yes, open that and we just need to replace or actually to put our assets folder in these spots here. You can do find replace. I've just got to do it a few more times though, so I'm going to be either lazy or industrious, however you want to look at it, and go ahead and just copy and paste it like that. And I need to fix the link to Bootstrap. 
CSS as well. Let's see how that works. Open that file in our browser. Refresh that. Oh, I'm not hooked up. I missed a link somewhere. Let's see what, what I've done. Assets, then CSS. Missed the CSS folder there. Save. Refresh. There we go. Let that be a lesson to you. Include the CSS folder as well. Alright, so that's functioning. Now we need to get our hero page functioning for us. Here's what it looks like initially. Open that in our editor. And fix that link with assets, CSS, save, refresh. Now we're talking. So we've got the beginnings then of a little site framework that we can use to build our, out our own site quickly using this template file they've provided. So that gets us rolling. We've got our little custom site. Its parent folder is mybootstrap01, right? And we can go to town from here. So what's going to come in my next set of tutorials, we'll introduce ourselves to the um, nav bar that goes across the top that functions so nicely in all their pages here, including the scroll spy plugin to keep track of where we are down a long page if we want to use it this way. But we can also, if we choose, um, do a page that works a little bit more like a normal site and just build it with links that go back and forth between our pages and then include drop downs such as this one here. So that's what's coming next and we'll get into the grid and then we'll keep working through the bootstrap framework to get familiar with it and then bend it to our own desires. It should be fun. Look forward to being back soon.